The last time the Baltimore Ravens played a football game was on November 7th against the Cincinnati Bengals on Thursday Night Football. The following game, which was this game against the Steelers, was played on November 17th. So that means you had 10 days, 10 days to prepare for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And get this, the Steelers, the last time that they played a game was actually on November 10th because they played the following Sunday after your Thursday game. So they had less time to prepare for you. You had more time to prepare for them, and this is what you put up. It was a lot of different kinds of terrible. Not all terrible, not all bad, because the surprising part of the Baltimore Ravens team actually came through in a major way this week. Team, keep it clean. We're getting ready to talk about it. I'm going to share my post-game thoughts from this ugly game that we all watched. Now, that, that was old-school Ravens Steelers, though. That was old-school Ravens Steelers. Because we all been talking about for the longest, like, Ravens and Steelers. It ain't felt like no real rivalry recently. It ain't been the same as it used to be. But this game was low-scoring. They were fighting each other. You could tell they really had that uh, just a nasty disdain for each other. They was not liking each other at all, especially them double-digit boys. Number 44 for the Ravens and number 77 for the Steelers. But anyway, before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn the notifications on. And even though we do not like how this game went, make sure you leave a like on the video and let me know what you thought about this game now the baltimore ravens um let's start off with the most surprising part of this game which was the defense like look you could say whatever you want to say about the offense in this game you could say whatever you want to say about special teams in this game you and i'm sure you're going to say some stuff about Harbaugh. we're going to get into all of that but one thing that i better not see not one person complain about talk bad about is that Baltimore Ravens defense in this game because the defense literally from jump from the very beginning of the game and so many times throughout they kept being put in bad situation after bad situation over and over and over and even the, the, the time where they actually stepped, slipped up and put themselves in a bad situation they still held it down because the game started the Baltimore Ravens got the ball first and what happened Derrick Henry fumbles the ball that never happens. And I saw so many Ravens fans in the live stream say, oh, well, there we go. Well, we're getting ready to lose now. And I was like, yeah, y'all chill out. But even though that never happens. But Derrick Henry fumbled the ball. Steelers were already in Ravens territory. It's like, oh, they straight. That was like a gimme. So what did the Baltimore Ravens defense do? They held the Steelers to three points. They held them to a field goal. I said, oh, my goodness. A couple of drives later, the Baltimore Ravens defense, um, they, excuse me, their offense, they moved the ball a little bit, but not enough field goal and Justin Tucker missed it put the Steelers in a good field position Ravens hold him again Tucker missed another field goal Ravens hold him and then right before halftime Lamar throws the ball to Isaiah Likely Isaiah Likely get a little chunk of yards or whatnot but Patrick Queen PQ <sighs> PQ he ended up getting a strip he forced a fumble on Isaiah Likely Steelers recover in Ravens territory Ravens hold him to a field goal. You had 10 days to prepare for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They only had seven, and the Steelers didn't score a single touchdown this entire game. They scored nothing but field goals. Nothing but fi six field goals. They scored 18 points, six field goals, and you lost. You lost. You lost. Adafi away was going off this game, had two sacks, then he ended up getting a third, but it got taken away because they reviewed the play and George Pickens, he, his foot was out of bounds for the catch. Oh, but even, speaking of George Pickens, he was doing his thing in this game, but um, Brandon Stevens, Brandon Stevens was matched up with George Pickens a lot, they moved George Pickens around, sometimes it's Marlon Humphrey, sometimes it's Brandon Stevens, but um, there was one play with George Pickens. Um, he just ran a little go route on Brandon Stevens. Russell Wilson threw it downfield. Perfect pass. Perfect route. Uh, just, just was a straight up go. Just go. Go get it. See ya. And George Pickens told Brandon Stevens, see ya. Brandon Stevens did not get his head turned around for that one. There was a play early in the game where he got his head turned around. It was on a ball intended for Calvin Austin. It was on a third and one. I thought it was a terrible play by the Steelers, but I was not complaining. Like, y'all, they do all the terrible plays you want. Because don't worry, all Ravens are going to do even more terrible plays. But we'll get into that shortly. But um, anyway... It was a third and one, and instead of just handing the ball off to Najee Harris, who was doing a, a solid job against the Ravens, instead of handing the ball off to him, they decided, you know what, we're going to throw that ball downfield. 
So on third and one, they threw the ball downfield to Calvin Austin. It was a really good throw, but Brandon Stevens made a play on it. So I'm like, okay, there we go. Okay, we see Brandon Stevens. Be Steve. But then on that same play to George Pickens, Brandon Stevens on him. He did not turn his head around. But guess what? Did the Steelers score a touchdown after that? No. Ravens defense held him to a field goal again. Again. The pass rush in this game, they were all right. Wasn't the best, wasn't the worst. There was sometimes Russell Wilson had a good amount of time. But a lot of times Russell Wilson had to move and whatnot. He had to run around and whatnot. Uh, so Ravens pass rush in this game, they did all right. But overall, the, the defense, they did their thing. They ended up losing Roquan Smith for uh, the majority of the second half, I believe. Um, they lost Kyle Hamilton for a little tiny bit. Travis Jones, he came out for a little bit. Um, the defense, they committed a couple penalties here and there. But even with all that being said, man, they still six field goals. They held the Steelers to six field goals. And then, it, uh, and uh, which we should have talked about this sooner, but we'll go ahead and talk about it now. They made some changes, and those changes – could it be because it was against the Steelers? Or could it be because those changes were just good enough? Who knows? But we'll, we'll find out in the coming weeks. Marcus Williams, he played, I think, one snap this game. There was no Eddie Jackson. And there was hardly any Marcus Williams out on that field. Marcus Williams only came in because Kyle Hamilton had gotten hurt on the previous drive. And then guess what happened? Marcus Williams was in for one play. And then Kyle Hamilton got hurt. But then he was like, hold up, 32? No, no, no. Come here. Let's switch. You get back on the sideline, I'll come out there. So Kyle Hamilton was right back out there. Right back out there. So Kyle Hamilton was playing deep safety, or Darius Washington was playing deep safety. And Ravens, their defense looked a lot better. So let's see if they keep that going. Still wondering what's, what happened with Eddie Jackson. I'm sure we'll find that out maybe tomorrow, if not tomorrow, by Wednesday at the latest. But because that whole thing with him... If he's inactive, okay, that's one thing. But him not even traveling with the team is just really weird. So, again, hopefully everything in his personal life is good. Uh, hopefully everything, it ain't nothing with his family or anything like that. Hopefully all the less good. Uh, but we should find that out in the coming days. But um, that was, I was, that was very interesting to the Baltimore Ravens to do that. But it also seemed like another move that they might have made, and let's see if they lean towards this, was Tredavious White. Tredavious White got some playing time. And they've been, they been talking him up this week, but I expected him to do that regardless. Like, I expected them to talk of Tredavious White. But I wonder if moving forward, if they'll actually have Tredavious White start instead of Brandon Stevens. Because we started to see him down the stretch. And they tried him too. They tried him twice on two big plays. And Tredavious White ended up winning both of those. So, let's see. Let's see. Like, couldn't hurt to shake some stuff up. I mean, obviously, they've been trying to shake stuff up at safety all season long. They benched Marcus Williams before, and then they brought him back. Then they benched Eddie Jackson, and then they brought him back a little tiny bit, even though he ain't played that many snaps. And now they bench Marcus Williams again. So let's see. Let's see what goes down. I really do think, even though Harbaugh shut it down last week, I do still think we have a slim chance of getting some Brandon Stevens at safety. I think we got a, a slim chance, a real slim chance. But – Let's see how it goes. But, again, I don't want to hear any complaints. This game, at least. I know during the, most of the season, yeah. But this game, no complaints about Zach Orr. No complaints about Ravens defense at all. Because they did everything that they had to do and more in order for the Baltimore Ravens to win this one. But they were let down several times by the other two phases of football. That being special teams and also the offense. Let's start with the special teams. Um, Justin Tucker did make a 50-yard field goal uh, But he also missed two other field goals And him missing field goals has been something that's been pretty common this year It's been happening a lot this year um, He missed the field goal in the Chiefs game He missed the field goal in the Raiders game He missed the field goal in the Cowboys game He missed the field goal in the Browns game He missed the extra point in the Blast Bengals game Then he missed not one but two field goals in this game So saying that out loud It just it sounds so crazy but it's been a consistent thing with Justin Tucker this year. Now, he has made some field goals as well. But he's been doing a lot of missing. And the missing it has been going on for the past couple of years. Now, of course, we talked about it last week. Is it Jordan Stout? Is him holding the issue? Could it be? Is Justin Tucker hurt? Could it be? Who knows? Whatever it is the Ravens need to know, they need to find out. And they need to get it solved ASAP. Because... Justin Tucker makes just one of those two field goals. It's a completely different game. Completely different ball game. 
And it's not all on Justin Tucker, but if he makes just one of those two field goals, completely different game. And obviously, if he makes two, way different game. But he didn't. And if he was having like a one-off game, like oh, because Ravens, they, they decide like, you know what, against the Steelers, we're all going to have our worst games. Well, not the defense, but a lot of them decide we're going to have our worst games of the year. But if, if this was something like that for Justin Tucker and it was just a one-off, oh, okay, oh, it happened, it sucks, but he never does it. But he's been doing this this year and last year and the year before. It's, so there's an issue. So Ravens, they need to get it figured out. It's crazy because for some big aspects of the Baltimore Ravens team, we've been talking about it for the past, what, 10, 11 weeks. Because, yeah, 11 weeks. Because the Ravens, they're they, they 7 and 4. So they played 11 games. And we've been talking about, first we've been talking about the defense for the longest. They need to get it figured out. What they do today, they figured everything out. Now, can we see consistency from them? Do we expect them to be like that every single week? No, of course not. But, again, they had no place to go but up. Something else we've been talking about, too, all season long. They need to figure out what's going on with Justin Tucker. And that's a consistent issue. You, you do not want something to cost you in whether playoff seating or playoffs, period. You, do, you cannot afford to have something like that cost you. So Ravens, do whatever you got to do. Like John Harbaugh likes to say, we're going to turn over every stone and do that because you need to get it fixed ASAP. Now, something that was already fixed throughout this season, but in this game, they decided that they were going to break it. And it was broken. It was Ravens offense. Ravens offense. And speaking of Ravens offense, uh, y'all make sure. I know he didn't have his best game today, but he did have a touchdown today. So that was great. He had a touchdown. He didn't make too many plays. But if you want to make a play for him off the field, get your Heart of the City hoodie, your human joystick hoodie. Zay Flowers on there uh, The link will be in the description um, You also can get your Revenge Season hoodie too From Harder City as well And they're going for $20 right now And if you use code Engraven30 You get 30% off So they're really hooking y'all up Now I wish our offense They could have been hooked up a, a little more today Because in so many different ways It was bad it, it, was, it was really, really bad The way that the game started The Ravens got the ball first And Derrick Henry fumbled He fumbled and initially when I watched the play live, I was like, no, 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 he was down. Derrick Henry was down. He wasn't down. He really wasn't. And that gave the Steelers the ball right there. I said, whoa, this is crazy. So then, I'm not sure if it was the next drive or the drive after that. Lamar Jackson, he's been looking downfield all year this year. Always trying to make some big plays happen, which we love. Threw it up to Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson reached his hand out, but... Couldn't come down with a the catch There was another pass Another deep shot To Deontay Johnson too Lamar had Jackson had to evade Some defenders Which he had to do a lot In this game A whole lot um, Cause Ravens offensive line Like It's been said Somebody brought it up In question from Team Keep It Clean They brought it up How When the Ravens They go against Every single time They went against A dominant pass rusher They've lost the game Every single one this year Every one Chiefs game Chris Jones and George Karloff is pretty good, too. But Chiefs game, Chris Jones. Raiders game, Max Crosby. Browns game, Miles Garrett. Steelers game, T.J. Watt. And what's crazy about this is that I remember while we were watching the game, we went to live stream. T.J. Watt hadn't done anything yet. And somebody brought it up. They were like, oh, man, Ravens losing this game and they struggling like this. And T.J. Watt hasn't even made an impact play yet. Guess what happened right after that? Ravens hand the ball off to Derrick Henry. T.J. Watt comes in unblocked. Whack! Hit Derrick Henry in the back. He didn't even hit him low. He hit him high. He, hit, he went right at his shoulder, tackled him straight up. Derrick Henry went right down. I said, oh, boy. Mm, mm, mm. And there were a couple of times where T.J. Watt came unblocked. Sometimes I thought it might be by design. Other times I thought it might be by foolishness. But T.J. Watt, amazing players make amazing plays. And T.J. Watt is amazing. Um, Lamar Jackson in this game, when you look at the numbers, oh gosh, it's ugly. It's the ugliest game of the year. 16 out of 33, so a little less than 50%. Um, 207 yards, average 6.3 yards per completion, but one touchdown, one interception. If you look at that, and that's obviously what all the big analysts and commentators are going to look at and gonna see those numbers and be like, ugh, yuck, gross, disgusting, it's nasty. Context is important with those though. 
um, because you look look at the interception. Oh boy, I was very frustrated when um, that wasn't challenged. I know somebody brought up in the live stream. Oh no, you can't challenge turnovers; they're automatically reviewed. Can't you challenge it being down? Justice Hill being down by contact. I just thought it was so crazy that a play like that, especially with how close it was, I didn't see it get reviewed at all. It was no challenge. It was nothing. And the rule is if the offensive play and the defensive play, they both got the ball at the same time when they hit the ground, it goes to the offense. And that, that play just looks so close, extremely close. And when they first rolled the interception, I was like, oh, no, they, they're going to review that. And they're going to look at it. And Justice Hill, he was going to be They said, nope, we ain't reviewing that. We ain't turning it over, nothing. We ain't reversing that call. I said, oh, Okay. And what's crazy about Lamar Jackson with his three interceptions this year, none of them are his fault. Not one. It's crazy. It's crazy. He got, what, 25 touchdowns and three interceptions. And the three interceptions are not his fault. One of them was Rashad Bateman drop against the Raiders. One of them against the Mark Andrews drop against the Commanders. And this one, can you call it a drop or it just got stripped out of Justice Hill's hands? Because Justice Hill went out on that wheel route, the famous Lamar Jackson Justice Hill wheel route. They got perfect chemistry with it. He went out for it, and Lamar put it on the money. Justice Hill caught it. But then Steelers linebacker, he ended up taking it out last second. Again, I thought Justice Hill was down, but, hey, who knows? I, what do I know at this point? I don't, I don't even know. But um, it was an interception. And I said, wow, that is crazy. But anyway, back to Lamar Jackson uh, in this game. Um, so with Deontay Johnson, they, they trying. It's not all the way there yet. Their chemistry is not way off, but it ain't all the way there yet. Um, they did try to get him involved early, but it wasn't happening. So they said, um, you know what, uh, Nelson Aguilar, you start getting them snaps back. Deontay Johnson was still out there a little bit, but Nelson Aguilar, he started being out there a lot more too. Um, but with Lamar, this game, definitely not his best game. Um, he was trying to run. Uh, he got a few runs off, but... Not too many. They held him down. Uh, he was pressured a lot this game. Um, again, talked about the whenever Ravens go against a dominant pass rush, a dominant pass rusher. Yeah, them struggles, they, they show more than ever. And they, they certainly need some answers. Big time. Big time. Um, the touchdown to, to Zay Flowers was nice. Uh, but... Yeah, they just, they, they didn't get it going. He didn't get it going. Um, as far as the run game, uh, we, we talked about Lamar, his lack of running in this game. Uh, but even with Derrick Henry, with Derrick Henry, it's like he, he was doing solid. But whenever he would get a big play, oh, flag on the field. Even sometimes with the offense, whenever they get a big play, oh, flag on the field, it's coming back. It's like, oh, that's got to be dejecting for a bit to be an offensive player. It's got to be dejecting. And it just kept happening over and over and over. And then even sometimes it wouldn't even be a big play. Just be a couple yards, oh, flag on the field. So with, with all those flags, what they did, they put the Ravens in a lot of first and long, first and 15, first and 20. So that would help make Steelers' job easy. That would take Derrick Henry out the game. So, and, and you know, the Ravens, like, they'll have Derrick Henry in on some passing plays, but a lot of times they won't. They'll be like, Derrick Henry, just go to the sideline, man. So that kind of makes you more predictable on what you're going to do. Now, um, just to, we're going to talk about some different offensive players first, but let's go to, I, I want to talk about that two-point conversion real quick. Um, because with that two-point conversion, Lamar threw the touchdown to say Flowers. So then on a two-point two conversion, um, and this, this right here was a big coaching blunder, for sure, by the Baltimore Ravens. And this, these games, these Steelers and Ravens games, a lot of it is on execution, and a lot of it was on execution today because John Harbaugh don't kick field goals. John Harbaugh didn't fumble the ball twice. John Harbaugh didn't drop the ball, and it ended up being incomplete. I mean, excuse me, intercepted. That's not on him at all, but this part is. Ravens, they got to get it. They got to get a touchdown, a two-point conversion to tie the game. They got the touchdown. So on a two-point conversion, they line up, and... They snap the ball, and Lamar, he's getting ready to run. But right before the snap, Mike Tomlin and Steelers, they call timeout. Very smart play because it's like, all right, let's see what they're lining up in, and let's, okay, let's get ready for that. Oh, Lamar's running? All right, let's get ready for that. What did the Baltimore Ravens do? They said, oh, they know what we're doing. Let's do it again. They didn't switch it up at all. 
They literally did the exact same, but they just did it to the other side. And it's like, man, you really? You ain't changed nothing on that play? Nothing. They called the timeout so they could see what you were doing. You showed them, and then you literally still did it. You still did it. And then on top of that, with Derrick Henry, him just being on the field alone, that gives you an extra second or two in every single play. With him just being on the field alone, because the threat of him, that freezes guys for a split second. So that'll give you just a little bit of extra time. And obviously, in a game like this, every second matters. Every yard matters. Obviously, every point matters. But on a two-point conversion, they didn't even have the threat of Derrick Henry out there. Not even the threat of him out there. And they ran that same play that the Steelers had just saw. They just flipped it to the other side. And it was terribly unsuccessful. I said, what? But it wasn't over then because they still had all three timeouts. But then the defense, they didn't get to stop. And I was like, oh, okay. I'm, I couldn't, couldn't be mad at the defense. They've been getting stops for your game. But the offense just did not show up today. They did not show up. Best offense in the league. Most diverse offense in the league. Didn't show up. Didn't show up. Did the defense no favors. The defense kept bailing them out over and over and over and over and over. Especially at the end of the game, too. Steelers could go up big. It's like, oh, man, they, they can go up big. It's like, oh, no. Then what happens? Marlon Humphrey gets a pick. Clutch. It's clutch. And the Ravens, they, they wasted all the opportunities. All of them. And the offense just, it, it, it was rough. Uh, Zay Flowers in this game. Um, not very effective. No, he had a touchdown catch. He also had that drop, big drop. Um, let me see what else he did because I, I, I really don't remember him catching more than like two passes maybe. Zay Flowers, oh, yeah. He, Zay Flowers had two catches. Two catches for 39 yards. He was targeted six times. Oh, yeah, Lamar on, there was a deep ball to Zay Flowers early in the game. I think on the first drive, if not the first drive, then the second drive. Joey Porter was holding his jersey a little bit. Not too much, but he was tugging his jersey a little bit. Um, but Zay Flowers missed it. Lamar threw it up, and Zay Flowers was more inside, and then uh, he, he, like, like he lost the ball. And yeah, I don't know. Maybe the, the tug was enough to get him off course. I don't know. I don't know, man. Um, Rashad Bateman. He had two catches for 30 yards. Um, he came up with a big clutch, right? A big clutch catch right in the middle of the field. And then toward the end of the game, he had another big catch. Uh, it wasn't the longest catch, but it was a big catch because of the moment and the situation. Uh, so good on him. Says he had five targets. So there were three more passes thrown his way that weren't completed. But anyway, Isaiah Likely, four catches for 75 yards. He was out last game with a hamstring injury, but he got healthy enough to play in this game. And he looked good when he caught the ball, but it was just him holding on to the ball. That fumble right before halftime. Oh, it was it was a killer, man. It was a killer. And that that's that three point swing right there. Cause that took away points. Um and it gave the Steelers points. We lost by two. This game of inches, man. It's really a game of inches. And every play, especially games like these, it matters that much more. Uh, Justice Hill, four catches for 28 yards. Um, should have been five catches for more yards. Of course, the wheel route, the interception play, but you, you know how that went. Mark Andrews, two catches for 22 yards. He only had three targets. I really thought Mark Andrews was going to be a bigger part of the game today. I, I really did, but he just wasn't wasn't a factor. Um, the catches that he had were nice catches, big catches, but after that, beyond that, nothing. Got nothing for Mark Andrews. Pepper had that one catch. That's where he uh he he was running. He caught the ball and he looked like he was trying to stop and make the defender run right past him, but he was just so big and strong that he could he couldn't even stop all the way in. Well he stopped, but the defender ain't run right past him. He's like, hold up, you Pat Ricard. You ain't a wide receiver one no more. Oh, I made this play. And the defender tackled him. Uh Nelson Aguilar, he had one target. Oh man, Nelson Aguilar had made that great play. Great play toward the end of the game. Now, the Ravens still got a touchdown on that drive, but when Nelson Aguilar made that great play, they called an ineligible, an ineligible man downfield on Pat McCarry. Pat McCarry had a really bad game today. Had a pretty bad game. Um, yeah, it was rough. It was a lot of penalties on Pat McCarry over and over and over. Uh, Ravens offensive line, Ravens offense, just so many penalties over and over. Some of them, a lot of them legit. Some of them, uh, they just weren't terrible calls, but a lot of penalties. And with that, 
um, that's just a lack of discipline. It's a straight up lack of discipline. Um, so it's not how you win games in the NFL, my friends, especially against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh Steelers have the Ravens number. They got Lamar Jackson's number. One and four against the Steelers now. One and four. When Lamar starts. One and four. It's crazy. One and four. And let's get again. Mike Tomlin knows John Harbaugh, but John, but John Harbaugh knows Mike Tomlin too. So it ain't no excuses. You had ten days, so it ain't no excuses. Ravens just again my, minus the defense. They did their thing. Defense is blameless, faultless in this game. But offense, it's bad. It's bad. Special teams, it was bad. Coaching, it was bad. Um, but yeah, defense. Y'all did a great job. So what now? We sitting there at seven and four. Um, got the Eagles coming up. Oof, the Philadelphia Eagles coming up. So that should be that should be a good one. It's gonna be at the bank. Gonna be a tough one. Um, but one good thing about the Steelers game, minus the, or besides the defense, uh, well, actually not about this game uh, because they lost. But You'll see these guys again. You'll see them again, and this time it'll be at M&T Bank Stadium. Uh, so hopefully you can avenge yourselves because this season, like the Baltimore Ravens, they are going to have to do a lot of avenging. If, if they're going to get to where they need to go, I still think they win the Super Bowl, by the way. But if they are going to get to where they need to go, they are going to have to get over the hurdles that have been stopping them for the longest. One is the Pittsburgh Steelers, two, the Kansas City Chiefs, and then three, obviously the playoffs too, but yeah, if you want to get to where you need to go, you obviously got to win in the playoffs. But those teams, Mike Tomlin, Andy Reid, the two coaches that know John Harbaugh the best, the best, you're going to have to get it done against those guys. You have to. If you don't, then you'll be right here with all of us come playoff time, watching. So... You don't want that to be the case. So we'll see how these Baltimore Ravens do. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Uh, thank y'all for listening to my post-game thoughts between this Ravens and Steelers game. Ooh, that thing was so ugly. But glad it's over. Now we move on to Philly. Look forward to this week. I'm sure your questions are going to be very, very fun and very, very animated. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on. And last but certainly not least, Make sure you leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a million. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Despite the Baltimore Ravens losing, still go out there. Have a great rest of the day. and Have a great week. I love you.